hey guys in this particular video we'll be going by permutations and combinations in the last video i uploaded someone asked specifically about combinations and to make a real video on this so this is my effort to make you guys understand what combinations are and combinations cannot be understood without understanding permutations in details so we'll be covering these two topics also you don't need any prior uh, knowledge to understand these two, uh, two topics in this particular video i'll be uh, i'll be going through everything that is required uh, but you must understand basic division and multiplication so let's get started so in order to understand permutation and combinations let's firstly talk about factorials so what is a factorial so factorial is basically the number of ways in which you can represent a set so let's say i give you a set of n elements over here let's say n is 3 so this is th a set of three elements in how many ways can you represent it so one way of representing it is abc itself you can also represent it in bac or uh, you can represent in ACB, right? You can also represent it in BCA or B uh, or let's say CAB or CBA. So a total of six ways. You can represent this particular set in a total of three ways uh, or a total of six ways. Uh, but th this was easy because the number of n was small. So we just had three elements. What if we had, let's say, 200 elements? How would you represent this? So there's no way you are going to calculate all the all the possibilities and then give me a number so the way to easily calculate it is to generalize this right so let's generalize it let's say uh, we have n slots over here our n was 3 so we have 3 slots and in the first slot so the first slot basically means the first character right so these are the first characters so for the first characters we have a total of 3 choices so we can have either a b or c we can put anything over here. Let's say we select a particular element. Let's say we select B for this. Uh, in the uh, in the second slot, we'll be having two choices. That is the element that would remain after populating the uh, first cell. So over here, since we populated the first cell with B, so A, C, A and C are remaining. So we can populate it with A or C. So there are two choices, right? So let's say we populate it with A. So now the only remaining choice is C. So we'll populate it with C. And there was only one choice for this. So to generalize, what we can say is that for the first block, we had n possibilities. For the second block, we had n minus 1 possibilities. For the third block, we had n minus 2 possibilities, so on and so forth. So the total number of possibilities would be n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 up to so on to 1. So this is basically what factorial is. n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to so on to 1 or in formal terms what I can say is n factorial is basically the uh, basically the multiplication of all the numbers that are less than or equal to n up till 1 or let's say all the positive numbers that are less than or equal to n so the multiplication of those numbers gives me n factorial uh, one interesting fact and a crucial point is that factorial of 0 or factorial of 0 is also 1 now why is this the case because let's say i gave you an empty set so this is a set with zero elements now how many ways can you represent it so this is just one way to represent it and this is the only way in which you can represent it so hence factorial of zero is one since you can only represent it in this one way with that point being cleared let's move ahead to permutations so what are permutations in the above topic when we discussed about a factorial so we said that given a set of n elements we need to select n elements out of it we need to arrange the, those n elements what if i ask you not to arrange n elements out of it but let's say arrange r elements out of it so how would you do that so let's call it npr that we are having a set of n elements and we have to arrange r elements out of it so a trivial way would be that we, uh, we could uh, actually do it manually if the set is small so let's say our set is a b c d in how many ways key, uh, we can arrange two elements out of it so let's write write them down we can have a b or b a or a c or c a or a d or d a right we can also have b c or c b we can have b, c, uh, b d or d b we can have c d or d a that makes sense i guess so these are the total number or d c okay sorry 
so these are the total number of ways in which we can uh, we can choose two elements and arrange them so we basically we are permuting two elements from the set of four elements over here so this is 4p2 but similarly over here itself if we had a very big set let's say n was um 500 or 2000 anything right so we won't be able to write down all the possible permutations and then count them so there needs to be a formula so let's try to generalize this for factorial we know that what we said is that there are n elements and the choices were n for this first, first a cell n minus 1 for this cell n minus 2 for other cell up to so on to 1 in case of permutation however we are just interested in r cells so we are just uh, choosing r elements or just permuting r, r elements so we are just interested in r cells so we can choose any r cells for that matter but let's say we just choose the uh, first r cells so let's say our r is 2 so we choose the first two cells right so what would happen is that the remaining cell the number of remaining cells would be n minus r because r, are the, uh, r is the number of cells we are interested in so n minus r cells won't matter to us now uh, if uh, n minus r cells are not ma uh, mattering to us then the number of uh, permutations or the number of ways in which we could have written them would also not matter to us hence we can say that permutations or NPR would basically be the factorial of n so the number of ways we were able to represent the entire sequence right divided by factorial of the remaining elements in which we are not interested right so this would become NPR is equal to n factorial by n minus r factorial it's as easy as that and that's what uh, permutation is so going ahead for combinations so what is combinations or combination so let's say you are given a set of n elements and you have to choose any r elements out of it so n c r where c means choosing right so from a set of n elements we are choosing r elements but wait a second did we all did we not just discuss that so over here we also discussed uh, did the same right but there's a difference what we did over here is uh, permuting two elements so the order was mattering for example a b and b a they both exactly had two elements a and b only right but the way we wrote them was different and hence they counted as two separate entities however when we choose something so the order doesn't matter so over here since the order is not mattering so these two would become a single entity these two will be a single entity these two will be a single entity these two would be a single entity so what can be done now I think you already remember what factorials were the factorials were the way in which you could arrange r elements or n elements whatever elements are given to you so what we can say is that combination basically is uh, the permutations or the way we are, uh, we are we can arrange r elements divided by the number of arrangements for r elements itself for the so the number of arrangements for r element is r factorial we know that and npr also is n factorial by n minus r factorial so if we put the value over here what we get is ncr is equal to n factorial by r factorial into n minus r factorial and this is the formula for this so uh, we derived two formulas so we derived ncr and npr and these are super important i would really suggest you to memorize this by heart and it's not even required actually they are quite intuitive if you think about it so going ahead there are some more formulas that you should know so ncr is and what's the relationship between ncr and ncr minus 1 so basically the way you can select r elements and in the way you can select r minus 1 elements uh, in the previous video i had already given the proof for this uh, so the proof is pretty simple and in order to drive you just need to write the uh, equation so ncr is n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial also ncr minus 1 is n factorial by n minus r plus 1 factorial into r factorial into r minus 1 factorial you need to simplify these two terms and then equate them so the relationship you get is uh, ncr is equal to ncr minus 1 into n minus r plus 1 by r this becomes a useful relationship for some of the questions so i would recommend to remember this one more thing what if i ask you to give me 
all the ways in, we, in which you can select any number of elements uh, from a set of n elements. So you have a, b, c, d. I ask you to select either zero elements or one elements or two elements or three elements or even four elements. So the n lower uh, limit of selecting the elements would be zero, right? And the upper limit of selecting the element would definitely be four because it has a four elements in total. So what? How how would you do that? A way could be n c not. So we can select zero elements plus n c one plus n c two plus n c three plus n c four. Mm, this is something you can definitely do. Uh, however, is uh, is there an easier solution to this? Yes, there definitely exists. Let's try to derive it and let's understand the intuition behind it. So we have four elements in total, a, b, c, d, and when I'm saying I can select any number of element. So for every element, I can have two possibilities. So in my final result, I can put a, or I might not want to put b, uh, put a, right? So let's say a rep uh, zero represents absence of a. In that in the final set, and one represent presence of a. In the final set, so basically for a we are having two possibilities. Similarly for b also we'll be having two possibilities. For c also we'll be having two possibilities, and for d, uh, d also we'll be having two possibilities. So technically, this becomes two into two into two into two. So these are the total number of possibilities in wi in which we can select any number of elements. any number of elements from a set of n elements or a set of four elements over here specifically so for a set of four elements we are having 2 to the power 4 possibilities and for a set of n elements we will also be having 2 into 2 up to n times so we will be having 2 to the power n possibilities so this is the proof for uh, for the theorem that ncr when r ranges from 0 to n what it basically means is that uh, you you can choose 0 to n elements any number of elements can be chosen so what would be the total number of elements this stands for summation this symbol right over here stands for summation often these symbols tend to uh, horrify us we tend to get scared from these symbols but these are just ways to represent complex ideas or ideas in a much linear form so that it's easier to read and easier to comprehend so this basically means summation so if we sum all the possible ways of selecting uh, uh, selecting r elements from a set of n elements this is how we write it so this would then become 2 to the power n uh this in entirety was uh, what i wanted to explain and this is super useful when you are talking about problem solving or competitive programming i'm pretty sure most beginners or intermediate uh, intermediate uh, coders would love this idea and would love the explanation if you have any doubts please let me know i'll be more than willing to make another video on this or clear your doubts as re as required thanks a lot guys